Um, we have Dale Livingston. Here. Tim Nass. Here. Dick Declawa. Here. Larry Lennon. He's here. I know. Larry, I know. <laughs> Justine Cimaroli. Here. And Mike Tomer. Sorry about that. I had muted. That's okay. Okay. Welcome all. Um, let's, uh, let's see. The minute, meeting minutes from May 19th. I take a motion to um, approve. Yeah, I'll make a motion. It was pretty thin. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion, comments, corrections? All in favor of approving the minutes as uh, submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Hi, Mike. You're on Here. mute, Mike. You're on mute. You're on mute. There you go. Sorry, I had a problem getting on the computer. All right, we've been plagued with uh, technical difficulties all day, so, you know. Of course. <laughs> challenges. Technology is great when it works. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, minutes have been approved. Old business, I see none. New business, um, we're going to continue um, with the review. Um I just got a, a brief uh, a brief statement. And then, um, uh, if we, if any of the um, commission members have uh, uh, any comments or anything to add, that'd be fine. Otherwise, afterwards, um, we'll do comments and then let Tim uh, carry on. Um, of course, the business this evening is to present the remaining planning issues and to discuss them, as we have done in the last two meetings. Um, the planning commission started its review in late 2019 of the Bridgeville Comprehensive Plan. After reviewing the plan, the commission identified issues which we deemed may still need attention. Members of the Planning Commission over the last few months have taken the issues, conceptualized them for the purposes of discussion. Again, we will present and discuss each, the, each concept one at a time. Let me emphasize, this is an initial discussion of the concepts for long-term planning. Once we are done presenting this evening, we will have a discussion regarding prioritization of the concepts. It is my hope that in the near future, we will have a working session with the borough manager and council regarding budgeting and refining the issues to move the planning issues forward. The meeting this evening will be kept to 60 minutes. We will have a public comment the last 10 minutes of the meeting. Um, anybody have anything to add? Any comments? No. No. Okay. Tim, you're up, my friend. Okay, final three. Um, and these, if you guys remember when we first parsed some of these out, these were a few of the, uh, I'd say, less sizable um, kind of stragglers. So some of these we may look at as quick hitters and things that can be started uh, sooner than later if we decide to pursue them. But um, the first is a new comprehensive plan. So I'll just uh, read my summary of the scope here and see what questions fall out. With the intent of identifying opportunities for how communities should approach the development of its resources, a comprehensive plan can and should serve as one of the primary sources of planning and direction for Bridgeville's Planning Commission. Uh, our most recent, recent comprehensive plan, I think it was 2004, I was looking through trying to find a date on the most current one. If it wasn't four, it was three, maybe somebody on here knows, but suffice it to say, most of that data was based on 1990 and 2000 information. As we sit here today, then most of that data is 20 to 30 years old. A review of best practices across borough, township, and county comprehensive studies suggest that plans should be updated every day. There's a link there that we don't have to link into, but when we send this out to everybody, if you're interested in where that came from, that seems to be a pretty common best practice is, is every 10 years minimum. Reasonable to assume that much of the data together with the associated assumptions and recommendations from that 2004 plan are now outdated. In order to update the plan and provide the planning commission and by extension council 
With more current information, the Planning Commission should consider initiating a new comprehensive plan. And I made the note here, I think especially the timing is, is advantageous for us if we decide to pursue this. So it looks like from US government sites, they're looking to have the 2020 census data available in Q1 of 2021, which would be a really kind of timely uh, opportunity for us if we decide to pursue this end of this year and into next year. Similar to the approach of the 2004 plan, Bridgeville should consider ways to incorporate the wider community involvement in the effort by way of surveys, committees, and or focus, session, focus group sessions to incorporate perspectives across residents and boroughs, businesses across the borough. I do think it's a tremendous way to, it looked like we had decent engagement from some of the survey results and summary output that came out of that earlier comprehensive plan. I'd love to see that exercise that again, whether it's as successful or not, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it's worth the effort. Uh, skipping down to the next box, potential funding sources. I would assume that this would just be a straight budget request. I don't think that there's any opportunity for partnering or getting funds contributed towards this. Um, and the initial, the, the potential timeline there, I think it would take probably two-ish months for us to think about potential partners um, and consulting firms with this particular expertise, figure out who we'd like, who we'd like to go with. And then the actual plan development, probably a six to eight month effort. Um, costs look to be anywhere from 25 to 50 K. I had reached out to Cheryl. She wasn't able to find the specifics in the last time we, we did this, but I think Cheryl, I'm speaking for you. I think you were thinking it was in the 35 ish ballpark that seemed to be consistent with some other estimates that I saw online factor in a 3% year on year for the last 20 years. We're somewhere in that 25 to 50 K. I think is a fair guess. <clears throat> uh, with anticipated value to the community of medium, I could see ticking that up even further if we really wanted something to anchor our planning efforts in uh, into next year and beyond. We're doing that right now, working from a you know a 17, 20 year old document. So I'll pause there. Any questions around the comprehensive plan item? I, I have a couple of comments, Tim, uh, on your summary scope. Uh, my understanding has always been that the uh, comprehensive plan uh, provides direction for the borough as opposed to the planning commission per se. So uh, given that these things get adopted so rarely, uh, its intent is to set the direction of the borough. And very often it looks at land use and it looks at zoning issues. And that's key. Uh, to the health of the borough. So I, that's just kind of a minor thing. I would probably change that to direction for the borough as opposed to just the planning commission. Yeah, fair point. Uh, development, six to eight months. In my experience is those things take a couple of years. Uh, when you look at, you know, it sounds like it's a, a fairly simple thing to do, but the fact is, especially if you've got a lot of outreach, when you work your way through it and giving each element the time that it deserves, you're probably looking at a couple of years soup to nuts for a comprehensive plan. Uh, I think your budget amount is correct. Uh, the key thing that I would say, um, and you say partner with an engineer or consulting firm, I really think you need to focus on a firm uh, that does planning for a living, if you will. Yeah. Uh, they are most attuned uh, to what goes on around us and other municipalities. They are most attuned to what is appropriate to include uh, in a comprehensive plan. Uh, no offense to my current firm, but engineers are engineers. They aren't necessarily land planners. We don't, don't we aren't taught to think like land planners. Uh, so I really think you need to focus on someone who has that expertise. Uh, and the last comment that I would have, anticipated value, I perceive it as having very high value because it does, in fact, set uh, the course for the borough uh, for 10 to 20 years, typically. And if it's yeah. done well, I mean, a document like this could really have a lot of value. So that's, I think that's the key point. And I appreciate all the comments. And, and con the, con the term consulting firm is probably too generic because I, I would fully anticipate finding somebody who does this as their niche offering. Right. Um, the the value that's that's just it. You hit the nail on the head. If it's a kind of let's churn out a similar you know deck of inf information that we just did for the borough down the road, less valuable. 
if it's truly let's sink in with Bridgeville, get to know these these folks in this area and do something specific to them, which is what it should be, then fair point. That value probably is uh, a little bit thin. Yeah, you, th you think about all the issues that, we, that we've already talked about and the things that the borough has been wrestling with for at least to my knowledge, probably 35 years. It's just it's the same stuff keeps coming up again and again and again. And in a good comprehensive plan, you can identify those and develop, if not a uh, a firm or an exact plan forward, some guidance for people to follow. Like this whole Baldwin Street thing. I mean, we could come up with a planner could come up with something. I mean, it doesn't make sense to go in and, and make that a greenway and eliminate the flooding and eliminate all the damage. And then what are the impacts of that? So, and again, I, I think this, this topic in and of itself is probably the most important thing that we can do is, is develop a really good comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, um, to, to, okay, to, to Larry's point, um, if it is something that's, uh, you know, two to three years to develop, you know, now that if it's a $30,000 price tag to get the comprehensive plan, you know, you amortize that out over the three years, you know, it's a high value uh, a thing that we can do for the, the, the community. And if you amortize it out, it, it's a lower cost. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. You'd be looking for a budget allocation over three year, each of three years, for instance, from the borough. That's, that should be fairly easy to achieve as opposed to give me $50,000 in one year. You know? Right. Do you have any experience, Mike, or anybody else on the phone from back when that what we're calling the most current one was done, the timeline around that? Any idea? Yeah. I was trying to back into it. Just I think your time, I think your date is correct. I know because I, I know they say you're supposed to do one every 20 years, and we were due to do one a few years back. So I mean, uh, time it took though from initiation. Oh, I don't know. That I don't know. I mean, Dick was on it. Dick, you were on the planning commission, and, and I think. I kind of vaguely remember it starting. Yeah, it was at least three years. Okay. And not to take shots at people, but the firm that was selected at the time, frankly, was a traffic firm, traffic engineering. And I, and again, if you pick a firm who does this for a living, and it, you can accelerate it a little bit, but you're going to get better guidance. And I yeah. think you end up with a much better document. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, good input. Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, the, the Pennsylvania Municipal Planning Code, um, you know, says to, uh, it needs to be reviewed every 10 years. Reviewed and, and you got something to add, Dick? No, I, I thought it was... Well, Ten years, I guess, is ten years. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's what the plan, uh, the state planning code calls for. Um, to be reviewed. Yeah, I think sometimes when they say it has to be reviewed every ten years, basically, some of their thinking is get it off the shelf, dust it off, read it. If it's still good, say okay, <laughs> and it's good to yeah. go. If it's not, right. then you revise it. Okay. Anybody else got any comments? Go ahead, Tim. Let's move on. Okay. Cheryl, if you can flip the slide. <clears throat> okay. Uh, borough cleanup. We talked about this in a couple of different ways over the, the preceding meetings before we dove into this, this prioritization effort. Um, Quick summary scope there, there's several areas of Bridgeville that are in particular need of attention for the trash and debris that is accumulated. Uh, goes without saying, those areas reflect badly on the overall image of our wider community, especially when visitors or commuters are passing through from surrounding communities that may be doing a better overall job of upkeep, South Fayette and Upper St. Clair in particular. Uh, this effort for purposes of scope would include planning, organization, procurement of donations or necessary supplies with an emphasis on attempting to gather wider community support and involvement, uh, and plans could scale based on overall interest. We need to be thoughtful about timing, obviously based on current social events, current events, 
with distancing and whether this is even something that we want to pursue in the short term. Obviously, this was written back in, I think, February. So a lot has changed about getting communities together and locking arms to go clean up. But um, anyway, an additional benefit of this item with respect to the fact that this was drafted in February is that we could potentially move on this. Not a huge budget implication. If it was something we were interested in, we could we could kind of pursue it as fast as we wanted to. Potential approaches include soliciting local businesses, Home Depots, hardware stores to partner with us for modest supply donations. Again, some of those things that we're looking for, uh, the current environment might, might change some of their willingness to give those things away for free. Perhaps sanitation companies that would give discounted dumpster fees. There might be other green or environmental organizations that would be interested in supporting our efforts. Um, if we had enough younger children involved, you get the police involved, similar to riding around on Halloween night, just to give some exposure to the police and create goodwill there. Sammy Screenhouse, discounted t-shirts for volunteers. We could go as far as we wanted to with this, with involving local businesses. Uh, again, as small or as big as, as involvement and in volunteer interest shows. I'd love to see us tap into the Facebook page, generate some interest. I think it'd be an interesting way to solicit ideas from the community of what are those hot spots that everybody notices and would like to put forward for consideration for cleanup. Um, and I thought we could potentially involve again, different now, but I was thinking maybe some of the local restaurants would be interested in hosting kind of let's all group at restaurant A, get the directions for the day, break up into a couple of teams, come back, conclude with the happy hour. But as of tomorrow, there's no drinks being served on premises again. So <laughs> the county's really crushing my plans here. But anyway, anticipated value to the community, low, maybe medium, if we got a lot of interest. I say low because, um, you know, you clean up a couple of different areas. How many people actually notice that driving through? I'm not sure. I do feel as a citizen personally, I feel like things have gotten progressively although small increments, progressively, there's there's some rougher corners of town that really could use some attention. Um, money, I'm saying between $1,000 to $2,000 just to wrangle everything together from supplies to you know, subsidizing a local business with whatever they're willing to give us, those kinds of things, but nominal. Suffice it to say, it's nominal. So that's the cleanup. Uh, happy to field any comments, questions. I, I think that, you know, something like this, um, you know, not only helps the community, but it, it helps build community pride within the residents. Um, I don't know. Other thoughts? You know, you, could look at, you know, you could look at this as, you know, not like, hey, everybody's meeting here. We're going to go clean up this, but almost little groups in each neighborhood. Like, Dale, you could have a group up in your in your area. Tim, we could have one in our, our area here yep. and we have, you know, have a day where it's, you have, you know, six to 10 different little groups that are going around and hey, we're going to focus on these streets here. And, um, you know, and at the end of the day, like you said, we could have, you know, everybody gets together and um, it, it's a, it definitely builds community support and, you know, this camaraderie and uh, a sense of, ownership for your town yeah you know, that's a lot of things you, you know people don't have a sense of ownership you know it's like you walk by something and you see trash and you pick it up you know you know you're you talk about you know anticipated cost between one and two thousand dollars maybe we use it to put garbage cans along you know the main thoroughfares where people walk so if you pick up a piece of trash you can throw it somewhere instead of just walking by yeah yeah that's a good idea nick you got a I did. Um, so I actually spent the last few days talking to different residents about the trash issue. And uh, I actually walked the railroad tracks. And somebody, I don't know who, or a group of individuals may have already started picking up some of the garbage around the railroad tracks. I myself ended up picking up um, two Narcan needles mm. and broken vape pens. And um, so I was wearing hard plastic gloves my mask and it's just it's you know and little you know kids are walking by it's like you just pick up that trash i'm like yeah you know i, I take pride in our community and it's it's just literally right across the street from the railroad from the rail yard and it just um i could definitely see uh our the business i work for getting behind this and offering our dumpster and other things if we need and i, I definitely know a lot of other businesses that would be 
um, willing to jump at this. I believe, yeah. So awesome. But I, I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Tim, do we have a list of hot spots at this point, or? I do, but I wouldn't submit that as comprehensive. It's obviously very centralized to, to the places that I frequent. The railroad, the railroad from, you know, where Nick is talking about all the way up to the overpass by CVS is one of my particular, it's just disgusting down there. And that, that's not a, that's not a, a quick, let's get some kids and go clean up the tracks. There are pieces of siding back there and tires. And I mean, that takes some grunt work, but uh, that's certainly one to me um, that every time I pass, I think of this idea and like, we, we should be doing something about this. Yeah. Truthfully, I've never been down there, but I'm sure it's everything you say it is, but it seems to me that's one that uh, if you're going to tackle that, you really want adults involved. You don't want yeah, to for sure. like Absolutely. Scouts or someone else like that involved in something that, that has the element of risk that you'd have there. But Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, you know, if there, it would probably help a lot if we had a list of hot spots. Uh, and I guess I'm blithely ignorant because I cruise through town and uh, maybe I have blinders on. I don't see a lot, but, you know, I'm sure it's out there. Yeah, I, and I, I run a good bit, right? So when there's nothing else to do, you're just kind of paying attention to the streets. Sure. You get off the beaten path a little bit. I, I think we could easily come up with a full afternoon's worth of three, four, five teams banging away at stuff and probably leaving things behind. So yeah. there's, there's several hillside areas right off roadways through the borough that have an accumulation of trash, tires. You got, you got areas that are overgrown by weeds. You have corners that the weeds are overgrowing in the, you know, the sidewalks. There's all kinds of things we could do. Yeah. This could yeah. be one of those low-hanging fruit type things. That, I agree. Okay. You know, it doesn't cost much. It's more of manpower, volunteer people um, to, you know, hey, get your shovels, get your bag, yeah. we'll get your garbage bags, and let's clean us up. You know, you hook up with one of the, you know, Michael brothers and stuff, and they come and pick up all the garbage. Or we talk to our, tra you know, Connie Hall and say, we're going to do this on a weekend. You know, can you come out on a Monday to pick up all the garbage? Yeah. I think a sweep of McLaughlin Run would probably, probably be in order be once or twice a year because I you can bet that there's a lot that's accumulated there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. All right. yeah, and this one too probably is one that lends itself towards parsing out three, four to dos across the five, six, seven of us in planning commission and I'm talking to the t-shirt place, Mike, chase down the garbage stuff. Dale, talk about getting supplies, whatever. Um, pick a day in the future. Again, it's all very dependent on kind of current state of things. But anyway. Well, Tim, with all that discussion, I think your anticipated value needs to be boosted again. Yeah. You know, I think it's minimum moderate. I mean, if you're talking about you know, the kind of thing that brings the community together, I think it leans towards high, frankly. It's a pride kind of a thing, as someone said. Yeah. All, All right. right. So, so don't let my low value sway you guys when it comes time to put, <laughs> put oh, your okay. rank on things. You I already had a rank tie. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. We go with that any, one. Any other comments? Dick? Not here. Okay. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, final one. I think this is 11 of 11 for us. Evaluation of existing parcels. Um, so one of Bridgeville's major challenges with respect to new development is the limited amount of existing underdeveloped or undeveloped property. There are some properties and sites within the borough through which uh, may offer attractive development potential and so should be explored by the planning commission in order to evaluate that potential. This effort would account for the initial research and inventorying of any lots and potentially buildings that planning commission should consider as sites for future development efforts. In order to facilitate a methodical approach to evaluating which, uh, if any of those sites would provide opportunities for future development, it would be extremely helpful to have a consolidated list of these properties and owners, together with any kind of historical discussions that have taken place to date. 
Uh, and then I think we should think about engaging those owners. Maybe it's, uh, you know, some of those owners we know have been approached in the past and there's just not a conversation to be had. Others, maybe we haven't talked to them for a couple of years. I don't know. This whole item is coming kind of from a selfish perspective because I know there's a lot of historical knowledge in, in heads around this call and in council and in some of the older folks around the borough. I have very little of that. So when we talk about, you know, the fact that we are so overdeveloped and have very little left, everybody knows there's like some slice of the bank down by Kogo's that's available. What slice? I'm not quite sure. Everybody references buildings by the last family who owned them. It'd be really helpful, I think, to have an inventory of those properties, buildings, uh, who does own them, what the current state of those is. And again, there's really no cost to this one. Maybe it's just a side of the desk activity that we pursue. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, I do think there should be there could be some value to that uh, based on what we find and just drumming up those conversations ag again and engaging those folks and seeing uh, what of the whole used car lot down on Washington Pike is available. Is there any discussion to be had right there? I don't know. Uh, so those kinds of things I think could be potentially very valuable if we unearth one or two properties where somebody's, the timing is right, the conversation's you know willing to be had, maybe there's something really cool that could come out of that. So the money again, nominal for evaluation phase, obviously the development estimates would be a future phase and carry a significantly larger uh, cost estimate this I'm just scoping as let's let's understand what the available inventory is uh, and go from there questions on existing parcels and you guys I'm open to if you guys tell me I'm, I'm just barking up a losing tree and you know all these discussions have been had uh, open to that well I think it's a good suggestion but I think it's a it's a pretty tough challenge in our community to find property that somebody would look at as wanting to develop it. Mm. Yeah, because I, I, Dick, that they're just not willing to move on it or because there's just not all that much available. There's, there's nothing really large enough right. available unless yeah. you tried to restructure the community to a community like Swickley and had a bunch of little shops, but I think that would mean slowing the traffic down a lot, mm. and that probably go over too good. But I, you know, you mentioned about the, um, I think down there by Fleet Depot, the parking lots. Is that what you were referring yep, to? Yep, exactly. Well, that's all in the floodplain, and you know that's another big challenge down there. Yeah. All right, so it might be a shorter conversation <laughs> than, well, than I was thinking. No, I, I think it's I think it's a a good thought, but I think um, and here again, if you had somebody on this comprehensive plan that really was a planner, yeah, I think they might be able to institute some good ideas that we could change what the whole image of the town is, but. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it could be done. Yeah, I agree with Dick. And I think maybe the thing, Tim, is to, uh, as we prepare for the comprehensive plan, is to develop this thought, develop this list, and uh, maybe use that as a launching point for the discussions in the comprehensive plan. You might, who knows, you might be able to accomplish something. But I think Dick is right. I mean, you look at the size. Well, I, I think you. You have to, it's good you're thinking about it, and I think you have to continue to think about it and maybe, like you said, take inventory of a lot of stuff. Right. And maybe right. something will pop up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which things happen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, Tim, the only thing I would say about that is it can't, I mean, it doesn't cost any money for a group of people to identify potential properties, you know, and, and keep in contact and have an open dialogue with the owners to see what their future plans are. What yeah. they want to see with their property. You know, just because you have a car, a car, you know, somebody has a car lot on Washington Pike, maybe, you know, in five years they're looking to do something different. And you know, to know what they what they're planning on doing or what they'd like to see, and if we can help them get there and, you know, 
that doesn't that doesn't cost money to keep an open dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, that's you said it better than I did. That's absolutely the intent. And and some of this is, you know, as a member of planning commission, I feel a little bit derelict of duty, not knowing what are even the realm of possibilities out there. Right? We should at least. So if it's me today, future planning commission member tomorrow, how do we orient people to like, here's here's what we're even talking about and considering. Here's the who's who of various businesses and. Right. You, you you mentioned like oh yeah because you talk about oh so and so has owned that building forever and you know they use it for storage. Well, is that the best use for that building? You know, let's talk to them and you know maybe they could get more value out of it if they use it for something else and they can store use it for a warehouse space elsewhere where it's lower cost per square foot. Yeah, know? yeah. I think it'd be a, a, a little bit of a way to back in too to getting thoughts from from those various holders on. What kind of input do they have for us? Hey, and send me a little bit to do something with this. I'm making stuff up. You guys have in 15 years have never approached me with an attractive plan to do something. All right. Helpful to know. Right. So I think part of this is, you know, what would be the vision? And let's just kind of pick on, you know, the north end of Washington uh, road. What is our vision uh, for that area for the next 20 years? What would you like to see there? And that's going to impact, obviously, a whole lot of properties. And it's, you know, you'd have to change your thinking. I mean, the difficulty I have with picking off individual parcels is uh, you really get just focused on that parcel and you aren't looking at the area as a whole, saying, really, what do I want this to look like in 20 years? I know, and we've got some issues down there that we would like to address. Uh, I tend to think that again if we came up with a plan uh you know and I, nothing coming to me right at the moment but if we had a plan for that whole area mm -hmm. and then that that lends to discussion of the zoning of the parcels and so on uh you know, maybe somebody comes in and says you know what i'd really like to subsidize that i've, I've seen yeah. that kind of thing uh where some people with money came into a borough and bought up a whole bunch of property started to redevelop them and doing quite well uh, but you need to have a plan uh, I think uh, uh, the is behind and somebody would see the value in doing that so that, that's part of that whole discussion I think. Yeah. well and, and yeah I, I think it goes back to having a having some sense of what a bigger picture is right for for the for the community to be able to go back and look at that I mean having an inventory, um, and and talk with people up front that is is I think is is a good idea, um, but I, I think to to try and approach them about development and stuff I I think there there needs to be a bigger um, a, a bigger picture uh, to to look at. So um, Cheryl, you said oh Nick wants to has a question. Nick? Yeah, no, I, I think um, I think it has a, a lot of merit to it. You know, we've uh, had the opportunity now, like our community is changing. We're going through a lot of things. Um, we need to identify those parcels, not including just business district, but residential. What are the blighted homes? What are things that we can get federal, national and state grants to help develop our community for? And maybe that's the bigger picture right now is what can we do and what can we go after? You know, um, main reason I got on tonight was there are two things brought to my attention that I don't know if they're in anybody else's realm right now. Um, we're called Bridgeville, but we don't have a single iconic bridge. That's I'm, That might be something selfish for me, but when we're looking to do these expansions on the north and the south end, maybe that's something we could do. Um, also, I um, had a friend in Harrisburg bring up possibly the idea of have we ever thought about approaching the St. Clair and Tuscany point about a man-made lake. That's 42 acres of land. You can put, if possible, put a man-made lake in. Now they get lake houses. We get water retention. Now that's a multi-year project, but these are just, um, you know, I think you guys are really hitting the nail on the head with every single topic, all 11 you guys have brought up and, I just want to say thank you. I, I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to all the great work you guys are going to do. So just uh, thank you guys. I do appreciate it. 
Thank you, Nick. And that's an interesting idea, you know, trying to trying to do some sort of, of um, combination project with, you know, adjacent community. I don't know how, how open Upper St. Clair and Tuscany Pointer would be to something like that, but, you know, unless you ask the question, you, you just never know. So, um, anybody else with, with comments? Excuse me, uh, uh, Dale. Can I make a comment? Sure, Bob. Yeah, on uh, on that uh, on what Nick just mentioned about a retention pond <clears throat> up further up McLaughlin on Road uh, across from that power station. Uh, I did some research on that three or four years ago, and I just want to give it to you guys. It's an area of about twenty two acres, and uh, uh, there's a couple coal mines under it where I, we all think you could put a lake. So I think that might, uh, that might be good for Bridgeville because I don't think that the anxious to build apartment complexes on top of the area that's been undermined, but I agree totally. That would be a great place for a lake with surrounded by a bunch of townhouses that would probably sell for, or sell for uh, a great deal. And the real estate company has been asking um, $2.4 million for the land. However, all of this, uh, you know, keep in mind, if we can to protect Bridgeville from future flooding, uh, we could get really, literally millions from federal, state, and uh, the county to do projects like that if we can get Upper St. Clair and, uh, you know, to be interested in that concept. I just wanted you to know uh, what I found out a couple of years ago. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Planning Commission, um, we've, we've basically covered all of the, the concepts that, that – um, but, uh, Go ahead, Dick. Um, I didn't have anything to say. Okay. Um, we, we've basically covered all the concepts that, you know, we, we've originally initially came up with and, and talked about. Um, I know that Tim's working on some sort of, of evaluation system. Tim, you want to talk about that? I guess what, what before you do, uh, we'll, we'll, we kind of want to talk about, talk through how we want to proceed as our next step. Um, Tim's put through a, a, done an evaluation system, created an evaluation system thus far for stuff that we've talked about with the exception of tonight's stuff. So, yeah, yeah, just one, one process question going forward. Tim, were you going to send out uh, the spreadsheet with tonight's topics on it for us to rank? I will. Yeah. So we can okay. do that. We could do that either. D Dale and I talked about this. We could do it real time if everybody's <laughs> prepped to do that and just bang it out, or we can do it how we've been doing it the last couple of meetings where you chew on it for a day or two. Um, so let's, let's collectively decide that, but that's a really good segue. Cheryl, can I take the, I'm going to attempt to, um, nope, you've disabled the screen sharing. Are you able to enable that? <clears throat> Are you still there, Cheryl? Yeah, she's muted right now. Okay. She looks like she's working on trying to. You can't see the the uh, slideshow, Tim. No, I was going to share something from from my side. Um, okay, but it so says if I, if I stop the share, you should be able to do it. It says host has disabled participant screen sharing. I think you probably did something. In the, oh, it was probably in the main thing way back with the yeah. uh, the way I set the meeting up. I apologize. That's all right. Do you? Do you have that spreadsheet from me from a while ago? The concept, yes. If, let me just give me a second. I'll pull it up. All right. If if not, it's I can talk to it. It's not a big deal. Your scorecard? Yeah, there's a second tab on that same Excel spreadsheet. Let's look it up. <coughs> it's opening now. Okay. You have a matrix on here? Yep. Okay. I, I don't know how current that is, but it'll it'll give a visual anyway. Uh, let's see. Why is it not showing? I apologize. Um, That's all right. 
Let me see if I can make it bigger. It's real small. Let's see, hopefully you folks can see it. <clears throat> yeah, good enough, good, just for visual purposes. So as you guys have been, thank you, Cheryl, as you guys have been sending in scores after each one of our sessions to this point, I've put them in an initial tab and it's just auto generating this grid behind the scenes that we're mm -hmm. looking at here. So, you know, you got your X and Y axis, pretty simple cost versus value to the community. Well, if I, if I were to show you the current one, which I'll send out after this meeting, everything is kind of oriented in that upper right where everybody's saying, yep, decent value and probably some significant cost to it. We got a couple of things that have dipped below that median cost line to say, all right, it doesn't cost a whole lot. I think traffic studies was one example where we said some value, not a lot of cost, but for the most part, everything's kind of oriented in that upper right quadrant. So what I'd like to do is get scores from everybody on these final three, send out this view, let us kind of look back over the 11 that we've had the discussions on over the last three months. And then my thought, and this is very much for, for consideration and debate, was coming into July's conversation, all of us have three votes. I think, you know, Dale and I were talking about what's the right number? How many of these things do we think we can legitimately pursue? We said, we think it's probably three-ish. And maybe we add in one of these quick hitter, you know, we're going after three formal projects and we're going to pick up the cleanup day, you know, as current events allow. Um, but three votes coming into July's meeting, you can put all three on one, you can divide them across three. And then I think we're just going to need to have some really good banter and horse trading to say, all right, what three are we as a planning commission moving forward and requesting some budget for? Um, so pretty simple. And, and it's just a way to kind of deal with what we haven't, we haven't seen a whole lot of diversity across the scores, I guess is the point here. Um, <coughs> I'll pause there. How, do, how does that hit people? Does three feel too restrictive? What are thoughts? Let, let, me, let me just throw something in here. Um, I, I think uh, that there's nothing wrong with, with – I'll take Baldwin Street, for instance. I mean, that's a, that's a big-dollar project. It's going to be years, decades, potentially, um, to, to get that through to fruition. And I, I, I see nothing wrong with, you know, prioritizing some of these and, and you know, let's, let's try and figure out what, what can we do for short term? What can we do for, you know, what should we say for medium term, you know, um, five to 15 years and then long term, you know, beyond 15 years. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think Tim's, you know, what, what we're looking at is trying to get an idea of what's what's low hanging fruit and, and what can we go, what can we do, you know, in the short term and, and what should we, where should we, you know, start looking for for next year for for planning purposes for projects that cover it, Tim, you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, I, what I don't want to do is overcomplicate this thing and try and make it just a numbers game. We ultimately are going to have to have a discussion. We reviewed 11 items. All of them have some merit. Some of them, to Dale's point, are quick hitters. Others are, you know, multi-year, multi-decade, potentially. Um, this is where the rubbers are going to just have to meet the road in a July planning commission meeting. And we just say, all right, all 11 are good. What do we want to pursue? So, Tim, just to, to clarify then, it, let's assume that it is just three votes. Are we going to be voting on... Uh, whichever element we think we need to focus on in the next, you know, say 12 to 24 months. Is that the idea? That, that was my idea with the voting. And keep me honest here, Dale, because we can pick up some of those other short term things as add ons. Yeah. The longer term stuff, we just can't do a responsible job and say we're not looking at those. So Baldwin Street, it's there in some form or fashion and it's going to be. But for the immediate, what are we trying to get in front of for funding requests for next year? I think that middle of the road is where we need to have some discussion of voting and what, what falls in, what falls out. So vote on what we think our short-term focus should be yeah. without excluding everything else necessarily. <clears throat> Correct. That's, I think, yeah, that, I think that's the key. And Dale and I had this exact conversation the other day. Nothing's coming off. It doesn't mean that we're throwing it out and never coming back to it. It's just where we're putting emphasis for right now. 
first bite of the elephant. Where is it? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So does that does that make sense, Mike, Justine? <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah. I like it. I like three. I mean feels reasonable. I, I think you Dick, I know you haven't been in the last couple of meetings. I don't know what your preference is. If you want to just weigh in on the three that you heard tonight, if you want to review the materials and you know, give me some. Yeah, I'd like it. Go ahead. I'd like to review it. Okay, it, I mean, it's a pretty simple scoring system. So once you have a chance to get through the eleven items, you want to just shoot yeah. me what you think is the value as compared to the cost, and we'll get you updated and and part of the comprehensive scoring here. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So, Dale, I know we kicked around the idea of trying to get these three, um, but just for purposes of giving folks time, it, it, you know, Dick, a chance to review the other eight as well. Maybe it, it's something we take offline. Does that work with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I, I think, you know, um, we, we do as we've done in the past is, you know, the next 24 to 48 hours, send Tim your numbers, let him punch them in, and, and um, you know, then we – we can, um, you know, we can, we'll have a better graphic picture of, of where things are at. I mean, looking at what he's done so far, there are, there is a, a, a pretty good group that's, that's pretty tightly bundled together. And so it's just a matter of, you know, um, looking at this thing and, and let everybody have um, <coughs> minutes to the next meeting to, to figure out, you know, um, give us your, your two cents worth for your, your top three. Yeah, exactly. So to be really explicit on next steps, all of you guys have the scoring spreadsheet already. Um, plug in numbers for the three that we covered tonight. Send it back to me. If anybody doesn't have that top of their email, just let me know and I'll send you a fresh copy. Not a problem. Larry, gotcha. Um, so send me scores for tonight's items. I will update across all scores and all items and get a finalized view of this grid. And Cheryl, maybe I can work with you and Dale to send out final grid together with all 11 items as input that people can chew on over the next couple of weeks to come up with their three that were prepped to defend and talk about in July's meeting. Cool? Perfect. Awesome. Justine, you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Dick? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. And then, um, you know, we'll talk about this again and, and um, go from there at next, next meeting. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything to add before I open it up to the, for public comment? No. No. Okay. Uh, Cheryl, do we have, who do we have? Uh, we have Bob Fryer, uh, Pat de Blasio's on here, um, Kayla Lawrence. I'm not sure there's one person here. They don't, they're Kayla. not identified. <clears throat> uh, and that's it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with Pat. You got anything to, to add? Uh, not particularly. I joined late. Uh, looking forward to seeing what the priorities are. <clears throat> Thank you. Move on. Okay. Um, Bob? Yes. Hi, uh, everybody. Hey, I, I, uh, I'm uh, very happy to see you're concentrating on developing the comprehensive plan. I just want to bring up uh, five or six facts here quickly. Uh, today, on the news in the past several weeks, uh, they mentioned that <clears throat> the U.S. Congress is going to pass a $1.5 trillion, that's with a T, dollar infrastructure bill to build roads and replace bridges, et cetera, et cetera, primarily to uh, uh, create new jobs, but obviously to rebuild the uh, the roads throughout the country, which are uh, in, in bad 
uh, shape. Uh, I wanted to mention as a result of that, <clears throat> excuse me, if they do that nine, if they do that in three months or six months, I think the most important aspect of the comprehensive plan is to, is to create a network through Bridgeville <clears throat> that benefits uh, Safed, Collier, and Upper St. Clair. And I think uh, we all, you all know what that is. And it's simply uh, that involves a two-way couple. And you're, you're talking about the Fleet Depot property uh, in, in front of the leasing company. Uh, that uh, that area is, I guess, uh, alleged to be for adding two more lanes on the sidewalk to widen Washington Pike uh, from Barter Road under the railroad bridge to Collier. And incidentally, it once uh, when you're you're talking about land use and zoning and all that stuff, once you decide on a comprehensive road network that has to include the Baldwin Street. Bar Hill Road couple, the the economic development, you're going to have to be holding people, real estate developers back to get into Bridgeville when you double the number of consumer motorists going through the community. But I want to mention something else about that. Uh, PennDOT often, incidentally, none of this should cost Bridgeville anything. You know, as, as optimistic as that sounds, that, that's the way it should be. Well, okay. we, need to, we need to get the comprehensive plan done first, and, and it, that helps. That's, that's right. That's right. I want to mention one other thing. Uh, Larry and a couple of you guys have been mentioning the importance of uh, Baldwin Street. I can't remember if I wrote you guys this information or told you, but the latest uh, consumer motors traffic counts on just Bowery Road <clears throat> and at the um, – McLaughlin Run Road intersection. It's like fourteen thousand a day. Where'd you get that, that information, means, Bob? F- from the county. The county. Uh, uh, I thought I called the state, and then they told me it was a county road. But one of the fellows, actually, the county gave me was thirteen thousand eight hundred or something like that. But let me tell you the importance of that. If right now, fourteen, that doesn't include the people coming out of McLaughlin and hanging left out of Railroad Street and hanging a left toward the center of town. Excuse me. That, uh, that, those people have been driving through Bridgeville, and despite the land on both sides of the road, there's no place that they could stop, no commercial places they could stop to spend money except at the ice cream place and the uh, uh, pizza place. If you do, if you do the two-way couple between Bridge, uh, Bar- Bar- Hill Road and Baldwin Street, you're going to take 7,000 consumer motorists who are going to be instantly driving by all of those properties on Baldwin Street, and uh, it would it will greatly enhance the attractiveness of that land uh, to be redeveloped. One okay. final thing okay. about uh, about traffic, uh, you have to remember. Ten dot or whoever will do a traffic study, and they'll say, "Well, we'll, we need one. We only need one lane here that will take care of it." Keep this fundamental flaw in 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 mind. For forty five years, fifty percent of the resident uh, residents in the area and the transient motorists have been driving around Bridgeville. So, if you take a uh, if Ten dot takes a poll on some of the roads leading into Bridgeville or let's say, let's say, let's say Washington Avenue and Bar Hill Road, <laughs> excuse me, they're going to be 50% less than they, w- they would normally be. So if, uh, if anybody tries telling us we only need one lane someplace, trust me, we need two, but you shouldn't have any problem uh, justifying uh, solving the fricking problem not just lessening the uh, not just lessening the traffic problem. I, I think okay. the the traffic that the network. I think you can get with the Baldwin Street Bar Hill Road thing. I think you'll definitely get strong support from Upper St. Clair and <coughs> excuse me and Scott uh, okay. for obvious reasons. Yep. But, but at any rate, uh, w- w- way to go, guys. But like, don't plan on taking two years to do the. Network road network part of the comprehensive plan. You got to try to get that done in three to six months and present it to all the funding sources. Well, yeah, the government moves in strange, slow ways, Bob. So, 
We'll, we'll get through oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's, we need. Thank that's, you. That's, that's very true. Yeah, you're very welcome. See Thank you. Cheryl, is there anybody else? Uh, no, not that I can see. No one's raised their hand. I don't. Anyone else? Okay. No, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, some, yeah, someone said Kayla was waiting or someone. She's online, but she's able to unmute if she chooses. I can unmute her. Oh, yeah. No. No, that's up to her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> you have anything to, to add to, for our discussion? No, um, just listening to it all, and it all sounds great. Okay. So, cool. Just seeing what's up, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Hey, hey Dale, one, what, Dale, one question. Is there any chance of having the public meetings done at the Bridgeville um, uh, Fire Department where we can look at drawings together and have the public give us their opinion? Is that uh, out of, is that possible? Uh, I don't think it is, it's possible at this point in time. Uh, there's there's okay. issues about gathering and, and that type of thing. So. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Okay, so just to recap, Planning Commission, get your numbers to Tim, and uh, we'll take a look at that stuff. And, and in the July meeting, come prepared to have some discussions about uh, short-term projects, low-hanging fruit to, to move forward with. Um, Dick, you got anything? Nope. I'm okay, I'm just going to go around the horn here real quick. Um, Mike, you got anything no, to add? No, I don't. Thank you very much. Okay, Tim? Yeah, just one thing very quickly. I, I know we've got an open position on Planning Commission. Is it possible, Cheryl, maybe you're the person for this, just to give an update on, uh, I'm assuming that's being advertised somewhere, some way. Just, just bring us current if you would. Absolutely, we have it advertised um, on our website. We also have it advertised, I, I posted it on Facebook as well. Okay. We did receive three so far that I forward on to council. Okay, perfect. Um, Thank you. Are they gonna close that? I'm assuming, um, I'm, I would have guessed that they would want to make a decision at the July meeting, um, but I haven't heard that they are, they've talked about it yet. Okay. Um, right. I, do have, I do have a question. Is Facebook an official recognized entity to post these things? We can post on our page, yes. Okay. It just if I'm correct, for this position, we don't actually, legally, we don't have to post it anywhere. No, right? we don't have to post it anywhere. We also don't have to, we don't have to paste, post it in the newspaper. Right. Okay. okay. Justine, anything else? No, I'm fine, thanks. Okay. Larry? Nope, I'm good. All right. All right. I take a motion to uh, adjourn. I'll second it. Okay. I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of backed into that one. Hey, nice job, Dale. 8.30 on the dot. I, I'll make the motion. Mike, second. Okay. Tim made the motion. Um, Mike, second. Um, all in favor? Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Cheryl, thank you very much.